Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, yes, I know I just did a video yesterday, but uh, that was more for the 3D printing side of the project. Um, I'd like to do a quick update um, since I haven't done anything since we've driven uh, the uh, shell or frame around. Um, <clears throat> so basically the next thing I've been doing is doing some uh, welding. And so let's go over and take a look at what we've been doing. So I redid this entire structure here. Um, I think I showed in a previous video uh, the ugly state of affairs there where I just tacked in some garbage to basically get everything in the right place. Um, and so since then I've been welding. Some of you have commented on my welding. Uh, I hope that's going to calm down most folks. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I'm confident in it, so, you know, it's my life. Uh, therefore, uh, I'm the one who has to trust uh, my own work. Um, so, anyway, uh, we're going to get back to the turbo box. Uh, you saw in part one where we uh, were able to uh, do the initial box. You can see the hoses coming out. Uh, those will go to the scoops that uh, we're doing in that other video on the 3D printing. Um, the other thing that we've been doing <coughs> is this right here. We've actually been putting uh, more epoxy on the parts. So I'm starting at the back. Um, I've done the rear deck. And then I've also done the rear... Um, bumper so you can see we've put some more epoxy on there uh, it looks like crap right now but uh, remember this is uh, mainly for uh, just getting some thickness uh, on the top layer so that we uh, don't sand directly into the carbon fiber um, so it's it adds a little bit of strength um, I wouldn't recommend putting layers and layers of epoxy on here um, but just enough so that when you kind of sand it down, you're not going to sand into the carbon fiber. Um, it looks reasonably okay uh, like this, but um, you can see that we did have some of those distortions. And so what I've done is kind of uh, flatten those off so that we can sand those out. We're obviously going to use some plastic filler on this because we're going to paint the car, uh, but I want to use as little as possible. Um, People say that the best is a sixteenth of an inch is kind of the maximum that you want to use in body filler. So we're going to try to adhere to that. If we do any thicker uh, body fills, um, I probably will uh, put a lot of uh, carbon fiber uh, in those types of fillings. Um, so I'll do another video on fixing some of the distortions that we talked about earlier say on the window surround. Um, we also talked about those distortions on uh, the B pillars. We showed some of that and so uh, we'll get we'll get to uh, those issues. Now after the first run uh, some of you saw the uh, what my son was saying was leaking out of the uh, vehicle. Um, it was actually that cap was off and so I just had kind of water pouring out so it wasn't a big deal. However, we do have some leaks. Um, one of the turbo flanges uh, on the return for the oil, uh, that's leaking. So it looks like the when I welded it on, I may have distorted that flatness on the uh, fitting. So I'm going to have to re-flatten that out. The uh, intercooler is now uh, fully mounted um, in the system. And then I've also got my brake lights uh, working as well. So. This is uh, basically uh, the state of things right now. So here's the epoxy we used. Um, it's uh, relatively inexpensive. Uh, I get all of my supplies from Composite Envisions. Um, so this is the epoxy uh, resin and the hardener. Um, so this is basically what I used over here. This is actually a thick epoxy. Um, and what I'm gonna do for the next level on this one is use some thin epoxy so that we don't build up too thick of an epoxy layer, just enough to get it flatted off. 
So that's, that's how we're going to do this. Now, as we're doing the sanding on here uh, with our block, um, you want to make sure that you're not going to get a bunch of buildup of this epoxy. So people have mentioned that epoxy is not the greatest thing to sand. I would agree with that. However, if you use a light touch and don't push down while you're sanding, let the sandpaper do the work, it actually doesn't gum up. So I've let this cure for over 24 hours and I'm using a very light technique in order to flat this off. I'm also using a crosshatch pattern where you go one way and then you go the other way. And that seems to work really well. I think that's what the professionals do. So, and I'm no professional. So, uh, anyway, um, so that's pretty much how we're going to do all of the sanding. So, um, I want to talk a little bit about the sanding. So, we obviously have um, the part here where we actually put some uh, more epoxy on it, uh, as I said, and then we're using our Dura Block. Uh, love this stuff. Um, so I got a full kit of that, and you have basically stick um, uh, sanding paper on there. Now I have an 80 grit on this, so I'm being relatively aggressive with the first sand. And you can see where all the high spots and low spots are. Um, we'll we'll kind of sand it back. If we get down close to the carbon, which will be easy because it'll start turning black, we'll be very careful about doing that. And then what we'll do is we'll get the low spots with uh, some, uh, you know, a Scotch-Brite or something so we can rough it up. And then we'll put another layer over the top, maybe a thin layer, and then we'll hit that again. And we'll just try to keep doing that until we can get it nice and smooth. And then that way we can avoid uh, body filler altogether. So uh, this is basically the procedure I'm going to use for this and the procedure I'm going to use for the rear. And then we'll get those all uh, flatted off. And then uh, hopefully I'll show you the next step, which is paint. Um, I've never painted a car, so again, another new thing for us. So we'll give it a go and see how it, how it works. Of course, I'm going to watch a lot of YouTube videos on uh, painting because I'm going to do it in my garage. Uh, so I figure we'll put up some... Uh, plastic, we'll uh, make sure we can get it as clean as possible, and then uh, have a positive pressure uh, enclosure around the parts. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, that'll probably be a little bit further down the road because I'm going to probably want to shoot all of the parts at once. But what we're going to do is we're going to get these all flatted off, get them all mounted back on the car, and then uh, get the gaps uh, all set as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, so we've uh, flatted it off, and then we've now put our thin epoxy on the entire part. And if you get down and look at it, you can see it's it's going to be a lot flatter when we sand it next. So we got some work to do on the edges there, but as you can see, the part's looking pretty nice. Um, now we'll probably keep it like this until we do the final sand. Um, that way we can have some nice parts on the car that can be carbon fiber for a little while until we actually paint it. So, but that also means that you'll see all of the warps and distortions and stuff like that, but that's okay. Um, I think this project is cool enough as it is that um, if we do some initial uh, running around with it just in its bare carbon fiber, uh, nobody's going to uh, have a cow. So, especially me. <laughs> This is what we're going to do uh, moving forward. I've actually made some new brackets and mounts for the um, rear end because I actually had this uh, sitting on some shims that I didn't like, so I actually redid the mounting for that. The other thing I've been doing is I've been uh, welding um, up the frame and its components. So I've been doing uh, some welding down here. Uh, on the suspension and other parts. Um, I still have a long way to go and some of the welds I'm going to dress and others I am going to leave as they are. The reason for that is, is that when I get the inspection done on the car uh, for the uh, uh, Colorado State Patrol, I want to make sure they can see some of those welds so that they're uh, confident and they can give sign off on the, on the 
car. Now, I've done this before on my 69 Mustang, which was not titled. I bought an untitled car because it was sitting out in the field for, you know, years and years and years. The last registration it had on it was 1977. Um, so I got a VIN inspection on that. They found two VIN numbers, but they were both clean. So somebody had grafted something else to the vehicle. And the uh, safety inspection was kind of interesting. So after I got it roadworthy, I got a permit, got to take it down to the CSP. Uh, they basically, I put my build book on the top of the car and the uh, officer walked up, looked at my build book, looked at my car, asked me a couple of questions, the headlights work, do the wipers work, blah, 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 and they passed it. So his comment to me is, is that they're looking for the monkeys, okay? So he was telling me a story about a guy who brought in a car that didn't have a windshield, no seats. I mean, it was a complete wreck and uh, no safety, so no seat belts. He was using a lawn chair uh, as, the, as the driver's seat. So they're really looking for the monkeys, okay? So they're looking for the guys who are just trying to get away with murder. Um, not literally, but in, in uh, building a, a vehicle. So, uh, so that's what we're getting ready for. Uh, so the next big event uh, on this vehicle will be getting it to the CSP and uh, getting a VIN inspection and then a safety inspection and then getting it titled. So uh, stay tuned for that. Anyway, short update. Um, thank you very much for watching all the videos and uh, all the comments. I really enjoy the comments. M mostly people, I mean 99.9% .9 of people are very positive on this project. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that this project was built from scratch. And so there's a lot of stuff that we have to, you know, figure out and do and, and do it right. So um, please again comment and subscribe and uh, hopefully we'll have another video very shortly.